Good morning, brothers and sisters. Doug White down here in Alabama. <clears throat> Pretty day today. How's everybody doing? Just thought I'd come on and uh, talk to my phone a little bit while uh, I was here in the parking lot waiting on the missus. I ain't got much on my mind today except this this uh, one thought, family, family. You know, I was born into a family. And everybody was born into a family, uh, you know, whether they met them or not, and you know, they had a family. If it was just a mother and father, they had a family. And uh, we don't have any say about it. that, do we, brothers and sisters? Family. So I'd like to try to simplify things down so uh, people out there that are listening to my little broadcast. <clears throat> we had no say in our, in our natural family. And brother and sister, I'm going to put it out there, put it to you, that we have no say in our spiritual family, who our Heavenly Father is. Our Heavenly Father, uh, we didn't have any say in that either, see, my sister. A child of grace is born from above because it was his idea. And that, in, in, in a nutshell, that kind of breaks it on down. Uh, in this, uh, I don't believe... I, I don't believe in a something to do gospel. I believe in a nothing to do gospel. It is finished gospel. Uh, I believe that people are confusing the new birth with uh, being saved from this present evil world, saving yourself from this present evil world. The will of man, your, your will had nothing. To, you, were, you were saved unwillingly. You did, it wasn't your will that you... That you uh, were born into this world. And it wasn't your will that you were born into the family of God. And I believe he has a great multitude, brothers and sisters. But I like to just put it on out there a little bit closer, you know, where uh, you know, we can cut to the chase, cut to the chase of the whole thing, you know. <laughs> we can argue about what this means and that means, uh, our, uh, you know, the good place or the bad place. But, uh, have you ever noticed this? Uh, where it says, uh, let's see. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life. There's a book somewhere, brothers and sisters, up there in the heavens. Only Jesus can read it or manifest it. And if your name's not there, there's nothing you can do about it. But uh, you can have a blessed assurance that it is written there. Because the Bible gives you uh, indicators that you can, uh, uh, that are evidences that you are, your name is written there. That is, do uh, you believe in his son Jesus? Well, he had to place that belief in you. You couldn't have believed in him, you know, uh, unless he'd... Uh, Put that belief in you. A lot of people would like to take that to themselves and say, that is of yourself. The Bible says, not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Uh, they like to make themselves differ by saying, well, I differ from you because uh, I believe in Jesus. But he says, no, who is he to make thee to differ? I'm the one that makes the difference. So brothers and sisters, uh, 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 not of yourself, it's a gift of God. And you don't make yourself different from the poor uh, uh, goat over there, one that's not one of his, uh, the the, the non-elect. You, you, know, uh, you don't make yourself different, so we can't boast in that either. That leaves room for boasting. So, brother and sister, I'm just saying, not of the will of man, nor of the will of man. We were born not of our own will, which brings great liberty to the soul and to the spirit of man. Uh, I don't know all the particulars, I just get on here and rant every once in a while. 
about things. And if, if I'm wrong about something, y'all, you know, get on here and correct me. But all of those names were not written there, were not written there. From when was it written there? Before the world ever started, brother said. So we can sit and we can argue back and forth about, you know, the end times and this and that. And I, sometimes I get involved in it too. <laughs> but it doesn't make any difference because if the name's not written there, there's nothing you can do about it. But I like to think of a God that is rich in mercy. Rich in mercy. And he didn't bring all these people into existence, you know, just to damn them all to hell. He had a reason and a purpose behind all, all of it. And uh, that's the way I think about God. I think of God, well, uh, I like to think on things that are good. <laughs> in him is light. And in Jesus is no darkness at all. No darkness at all. So that's what I, when I think about Jesus, that's who I think, that's how I think of. No darkness at all. I, uh, we got, we have, uh, we sin, <laughs> but he never has sinned. So Jesus never has sinned. And we, and we battle with sin all the way up to our last breath in this body. But to thank God in heaven, there's some people out there to whom the Lord will not impute sin. N-O-T. No matter what that sin is, he won't, put, he won't charge him with it. Because why? Because that's one that he loves. I think probably the greatest deception in, uh, in the world today is that God loves everyone. You just go up there and ask him. <laughs> They'll tell you what. Go just get out there and, he'll, and everybody will tell you that. But brother, sister, the Lord uh, knows them that are his. Uh, whom he loves, he chastens. So uh, what does that tell you, brother, and sister? There's some out there that he doesn't love. <laughs> I mean, simple logic will tell you that, brother, and sister. But I thought I'd get out here and go over a few things and just talk to my phone about uh, this wonderful, wonderful uh, creator. And I like, and his, I believe his name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, for he shall save his people from their sins. He's going to save his people from their sins. That means all his people will be saved from their sins. That means he has people that aren't his people. That's the great deception. The great deception. Not the uh, lie about the uh, going to the moon, which is a big, a big, huge lie that the whole world believes, make believe and believe it. Not that the earth is a spinning ball, which is a great, big lie that everybody believes with this uh, space religion of our day, uh, which is really worshiping the devil. But that's not the biggest one. The biggest one is this, that uh, God uh, loves everyone. And it wouldn't be fair for him just to uh, save some and leave some behind. But I tell you what, brothers and sisters, we best put our hand over our mouth and say, that's God's business. I've learned that if I hadn't learned anything else. But that doesn't mean we don't go out and love our neighbor as, as ourselves just because he doesn't love everybody. That's God is God and man is man, you know. Can we say to the to the, to to the uh, can the for, can that which is formed say to the can the potter tell the clay how to make him? No, we can't do it. That which is formed say that he's the formed. Why'd you do this? No, we can't do that, brother. Said we gotta let God be God and let every man be a liar out here that tells you that they're gone to the moon. How ridiculous can you be? Great men of education believe that lie. That shows you. Bible says, if a man think himself wise, let him become a fool, brother and sister. So people think you're foolish when you tell you tell them that, the, that the, nobody's landed on God's moon. Nobody's landed up there, and the earth, for the most part, is a, a, a stretched out plain. Water finds its own level. Go down to the ocean and look. You, they think you're a fool. Why? Because you don't go along with the world program. The world's program, say. No, brother, sister. Anyway, just out here talking to my phone. Just want to tell you though, but God is a, is a good God, 
and uh, that's what I found to be true. It's a good thing that he is a good God. In him is light and no darkness at all in, in, our, in our God. When you get to the heavenly world, to the world to come, it'll be one eternal day. won't be any darkness. In this world, you have darkness, see? You have dark. It gets dark. You got the children of light and, and the children of the night, say, brother and sister. But uh, God's people are the children of the day. I like daytime. Can't wait till it gets here every morning. Because I know his mercies are new every morning. I know I sin right before I get to the coffee cup every morning. <laughs> but, oh, but I know he's not going to charge me with that sin. Why? Because I'm smarter than the average bear? No. Because, uh, because he loves me. I hope. <laughs> I believe. But anyway. Just want to uh, put it out there to you this morning, I mean this afternoon. I enjoy coming out and seeing all types of God's people. And I look at them real close. Well, I can't look at them as close as I used to because they all got masks on. But I used to could just tell by their countenance that they were children of grace, brothers and sisters. God's people are children of grace. I, don't know, you, 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 I think that's one of the things that this mask is covering up. It's coming up the countenance of God's people because people talk with their face, with their, with their expression on their face, with their smiles. <laughs> they, uh, so, uh, no, I believe God has a great big family. And just because they don't wear their religion on their sleeves doesn't mean that his spirit is not, has not taken up his abode in their heart. Brothers and sisters, you ever been around somebody you just like and you didn't know why you liked them? <laughs> Maybe it was because they were born of his spirit. And they might not be a perfect person. I've seen people that come out of the beer joints, smoke, <laughs> do everything under the sun. Uh, I mean, well, but uh, church people wouldn't call born again people. But I tell you what, they'll give you the shirt off their back. And they take you home to eat with them. And uh, like I say, I believe this God has lots of people like that that we don't even think that in his kingdom. Well, I'm about to come to the end of this little rant. <clears throat> but uh, But anyway, born again, not of your own will, against your will. You had to be made willing, brothers and sisters. And what people think is when they come, conversion is when you come willingly because you've been changed on the inside and you have a different will. You want to know God, say. You have a different will. Conversion and the new birth are two different matters, brothers and sisters. And that's what, the, uh, that's what we learn on just about every street corner around here, a something to do gospel. But no, it's a something done gospel. And God has a people that he loves. All right, well, I'm just ranting and raving now. I tell you what, please, uh, if you want to, comment on my little channel and, uh, and straighten me out. And uh, if you need to, and... Uh, I like to know if somebody's watching, so, you know, I'll get me up enough nerve to send it out there next time. <laughs> but anyway, appreciate everybody. Uh, I'm no better than anybody else. Peace and love from this old boy down here in Alabama.